بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته So our father and mother Adam and Hawa were finally expelled from Jannatul Adn, the Garden of Eden, as Allah explains in the Quran. And the expulsion was not a punishment. As we understand from the verses of the Quran, it was not a punishment. And from the Ahadith, it wasn't one based on wrath and anger from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There was a greater wisdom behind it, a greater qadr, a pre-measurement, a pre-ordainment by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which He knows best how it's justified and how it fits with our circumstances of being here. But Allah had a plan. And we were to be here on this earth. This is what's important to us, that we were to be here on this earth in order to earn our place in Jannah. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He warned us. He warned us from the shaitan. And He said, Beware of him. He is your enemy. Look at what he did to your fathers, your father and mother. He took them out of Jannah when they were once in there. Do not let him take you out of it. In other words, don't let him stop you from entering it. We have to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And by getting closer to him, that love will increase. Our life in this life comes better. And we earn Jannah, insha'Allah ta'ala. Adam and Hawa. That was sent down to earth. Allah says, Qala bita minha. Allah said to them, Descend from it. And when we use the word habata in Arabic, it's when someone descends from an upper place to a lower place. It has two meanings an upper place of status or an upper place which is physical. Allah knows best. But Jannah is both it's upper physical and upper in status. And that was sent down. To this earth and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to them I shall be with you I will guide you I will send you my guidance if you need me I'll be there so the situation is not that of wrath or punishment if Allah wanted to punish our father and mother then he would have not given them guidance he would have let them live in misery in this world forever he wouldn't give them any type of entertainment in this world or pleasures because Allah says you will have in their pleasures until an appointed time, until death comes to you. So we're here to grow and to learn and to be tested for ourselves and to choose in our choices. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah says in the Quran, وَنَفْسٍ وَمَا سَوَّاهَا فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا Allah talks about this nafs, this self that we have, and how He has designed it. He gave it its tendency to do really bad evil and he gave it the tendency to do really good it's up to your your choice he who purifies it mean keeps their nafs away from its bad desires protects it from it has succeeded and whoever obeys his nafs has truly lost because as in another verse in the Quran the wife of Al-Aziz in the story of Yusuf alayhi salam you all know that story where she seduced Yusuf alayhi salam. In the end of the story, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saves Yusuf alayhi salam and he refuses to exit until the women who seduced him or spoke about him, including the wife of Al-Aziz, were to admit their fault. So he wanted to come out with honor. And the wife of the Aziz admitted. She said, Al-ana has has al ana rawattuhu an nafsi. Now the truth has come. I admit that I am the one who seduced him. 
And then she goes on by saying afterwards, few few words later, وَمَا أُبَرِّئُ نَفْسِي I cannot make myself innocent, my nafs. She, she, she returns it back to the nafs. She knew what the nafs is, these, these, these bad desires within us. The nafs gets hungry, it, 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 it's selfish, it gets jealous, it's arrogant, it neglects people's rights, it's ungrateful. The nafs loves to try the haram, the nafs loves to try adultery, the nafs loves wealth, the nafs. She said, Inna nafsa la amaratun bisu. The nafs surely commands only bad things. So it's in the Quran, Allah SWT acknowledged this statement that the nafs surely tell us, tells us to do bad things all the time. So we should, as Allah says, disobey the nafs and purify it. And purify it by keeping it away from its lustful desires in the haram, in the things which Allah has forbidden. So now we are here to fight this nafs. We are to wrestle it. And Allah will not program us to be obedient to Him because that's not true obedience. That's not true earning of paradise. And if you do obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger and repent from your sins, you can become higher than the angels because they bowed down to Adam salam in his pure state. Allah will take that impurity from you in the hereafter and put you into Jannah. As if the angels themselves are bowed to all the offsprings of Adam who are now pure in Jannah. We ask Allah to make us one of them. So Adam and Hawa were sent down to this earth. In one narration, it says that Adam alayhi salam, many scholars agree with this, that Adam alayhi salam landed in India. Adam alayhi salam, he came down to earth and landed in India. And Hawa in Asham or near Mecca in that area. Allah knows best, there's differences of opinions, but what we do understand is that they came down in separate places. And so they began the search for one another. This search, my dear brothers and sisters, is inherited today when people are searching for their spouses. We are on a journey. And Allah has guided us in that search for a spouse even, through his messengers. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, for example, about the man, man جَاءَكُمْ تَرْضَوْنَ دِينَهُ وَخُلُقَهُ فَزَوِّجُوهُ If a man comes to you, O fathers of your daughters, and obviously to the daughter as well, when she gets the opportunity to see the spouse, to speak to him, but generally, Rasul is giving advice, when a man comes to you, and you are pleased with his character and his religion, then marry him off. If you do not do so, there will be corruption on earth and terrible sin. Because what is there better than good religion and character? These are the two elements that make up a good family, make up a good man. What else can make up? Everything else is just rubbish. Doesn't fear God and has no good character. Rubbish. And then he advised, for example, in searching for a wife. Rasul tells us, this is just an example of many words that he said in his advice. A woman is married off usually for four reasons, meaning a man looks for four reasons to marry her in. Either the man searches for his, her beauty as the first priority, or her wealth as the first priority, or her lineage as the first priority. Lineage meaning, in the Arab world, lineage is the name of her ancestors. So it doesn't matter about their character, it just means that their ancestors are, have a fame. So I'll get married to her, to grow on her back, become famous and become, you know, honorable among the other clans and tribes. Or number four, her deen, her way of life. Loosely, religion. But Islam is a deen, it's a way of life. It's not just a religion where you sit inside of a, a corner or inside of the masjid only and worship. Where it's separate from your other dealings outside. Islam is not a separation of state and personal affairs. It's a combination together. It's a whole way of life. 
Even the way we go to the toilet, believe it or not. The way we eat. The way we yawn. The way we sleep. The way we sit. What is recommended for us in the way we comb our hair. In the way we clean ourselves. The way we marry. The way we raise our children. Everything else. The way we walk and talk. Everything. It's a way of life. A deen. So he said, فَضْفَرْ بِذَاتِ الدِّينِ تَرُبَتْ يَدَاكِ Make the deen, her way of life, in the way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, her Islamic way of life, be your priority. Otherwise, he said, تَرُبَتْ يَدَاكِ Otherwise, you will be playing with soil. You know, a person sits there playing with dirt, like a child, just playing with dirt. A grown old man, play, play with dirt. You're not doing anything for yourself. If you put money or beauty or lineage as your priority and the deen is not your priority. If you get all four, that's fine. But the deen is the priority. So these are some ways that Rasulullah has taught us about searching for the spouse or accepting the spouse or deciding on a spouse. So Adam and Hawa searched for each other. Now, I'd like to make a little point here. Everything we mention about Adam and Hawa, these things, we, you need to understand that because they are our fathers, we actually inherit we inherit their characteristics, their features physically, and their characteristics morally. So we, 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 we actually inherit what they had of character, manners, and physical appearance. In relation to physical appearance, Rasul ﷺ describes Adam السلام, in the following manner. This hadith is sahih. You'll find similar wordings in Bukhari and Muslim, many other books of hadith. That Adam alayhi salam, he was 60 cubits long or tall. 60 cubits tall. A dhira is said to be from the elbow to the tips of the fingers. And some say it's from the shoulder to the tips of the fingers. You're close to about a meter. 60 meters almost. 50 meters tall. And about 40 meters wide. About. And he was beautiful. Adam is actually, most scholars suggest that he is the most handsomest and beautiful looking human being, even more than Yusuf. Why? Because they said, because Allah created him. As Allah said, I created with my hands. I created him with my hands. In other words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually fashioned Adam as the Prophet says, ala suratih, in his own image. In his own image. Now, maybe some people are thinking, well, but Christians, this is what they use. They say that we are created in the image of God. In this hadith, it doesn't mean that. The hadith does not say Allah created Adam in the image of God. He said, Allah created him on his own image. Meaning, Adam was not born and then developed his height and weight and his skin and hair and everything as he grew old like us. He's not born as a baby. But the way he, was, he first came to this world was the way that he was at the time that he was created. As in, he, did, he wasn't born from anyone. He wasn't a baby and then grew. But at the age that he created him, at that form that he created him, he started from there. So Allah created Adam السلام, in his appearance without having to have led up to that appearance. And he got, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, created Adam alayhi salam from all the different soils and clays of the earth. The different soils and clays of the earth. Why? What does that tell us? So Rasul sallallahu alayhi salam explains, again in the hadith, sahih hadith, you've got no problems in that, uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam alayhi salam from different colors of soils and clays, from different textures. So some was hard, others were soft, some were white, some were dark. And so he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, and therefore there came out the different colors of people, the different characteristics of people, the different uh, attitudes of people. So some people are created naturally from birth with a tendency to be a little bit more rough than others. And others are created a little bit more softer than others. Others a little bit more lenient, others a little bit more firm, a little bit. It doesn't matter which way Allah created you, it's all actually part of the test. If you're created naturally, you tend to be more softer, then Islam comes in and tells you, okay, now this is how you are, you're going to now train yourself to come a little bit more firmer. 
in certain areas. If you're too firm, Islam comes in and teaches you, okay, this is your test. You're going to have to wrestle with your nafs to try and make yourself a little bit more lenient in these areas. Some people are rough with their physical, you know, their anger. So Islam comes and tells them, lighten up. Some people are too soft, so they just let people walk over them. Even when the truth is there, they'll just let the truth go and compromise. Islam tells them to be a bit more firmer. So all of it is actually a test for us. You can't say, I'm naturally this way, I can't do anything about it. No, we actually can. But that's part of the test. It's like being born into a family that's poor, family that's rich, family that inherits diseases. You are tested, we are tested in our own world, in our own circumstances, and we are to learn about our deen to see how we're going to pass this test, inshallah. Our different colors and nationalities. Allah, Rasul Sallallahu said in his final sermon, before his death, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, by about three or four months, Hajjat al Wada, in his last Hajj in Mecca, it was his only first and last Hajj, where he said, All of the human beings are like the, the teeth of a comb. We are equal in Allah's eyes. The difference is our righteousness. He says, And we are all from Adam. Alayhi salam, wa Adam min turab. And Adam is from the soil. You see. So Islam talks about justice here and equality between humanity. Yes, we may have Muslim brotherhood and sisterhood, which is a very special bond, but we also do have rights of other humans, even non-Muslims. And every person, I say this all the time, every non-Muslim person is a potential Muslim. Brothers and sisters, every non-Muslim person, harsh or not, enemy or friend, is a potential Muslim in our eyes, inshallah. We try our best to invite, and the rest is up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No need to draw out the sword and force people into the deen, to Islam, no. At the end of the day, who knows, a few years' time maybe they will be guided and they'll accept this deen. You never know. I remember, uh, I'd like to mention him. Uh, an, an imam uh, by the name of uh, Abu Amin Bilal Phillips. You ever heard of him? Well, when he came here about, I think, 15, 16 years ago, I was only about 18 that time, and I listened to his first lecture, actually the first one in Melbourne that I know of him to have given, and the only one probably, the only time he was able to, came out, to come out. He said, when I embraced Islam, he said it took about 19 or 20 years as far as memory serves me until finally my parents became Muslim. 20 years or 19 years, if memory serves me right. So you never, never give up, inshallah. Adam alayhi salam and Hawa searched for each other. In one narration it says, they became acquainted, they found each other on the mountain of Arafat. That's the name of the mountain, the mountain of acquaintance. Allahu Alam, maybe because Adam and Hawa found each other on that mountain. You all know the Mount of Arafat, that area where we go for in Hajj. Huge story about that, inshallah. Later classes to come, inshallah, we may have a chance to talk about it. And there, my dear brothers and sisters, they renewed their life here on earth. There's a difference of opinion about how long Adam and Hawa stayed in paradise. We don't know exactly. But the majority of scholars agree that it was more than 40 years, at least. And he lived on earth for about a thousand years. The Jews in the Torah have a different age to Adam alayhi salam, it's close but a bit different. However we all know what happened to the Torah and the Injil, the Bibles that were sent down later on, they became corrupted they were changed and altered. Therefore our Quran, our Hadith stay firm and the Prophet alayhi salam, tells us that he stayed on earth for a thousand years or he stayed, he, he lived, sorry for a thousand years, not necessarily on earth, lived for a thousand years could have been forty years in Jannah and 960 years on earth. Adam alayhi salam had 40 years extra of his life. But it says in one 
Sahih hadith, which is also in Muslim, Sahih Muslim, that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam alayhi salam, there was a time where he took out all of his offspring in front of him. His offspring, like all of us, were taken out before Adam alayhi salam and he could see us, all of his children, from the beginning to the end of time. And, and, and we had light on our foreheads or on our faces. Some people had their lights more than others. And there was one particular man whom he liked his light very much. And he asked, who is that? And they said, this is your son Dawood, alayhi salam, the prophet Dawood, alayhi salam, David. And Rasul um, Adam alayhi salam asked, how long is he being given to live? They said, 40 years. He said, oh my Lord, sorry I was mistaken, give him another 20 years of my life. So he was given another 20 years, 60 years of his life. So Adam alayhi salam died a little bit before his time. We mentioned last week that Adam alayhi salam repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَتَلَقَّى آدَمُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتٍ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ إِنَّهُ هُوَ التَّوَابُ الرَّحِيمُ Adam alayhi salam had learnt some words from his Lord. Allah is the one that taught him. When you say تَلَقَّى it means you take it straight from the person. فَتَلَقَّى آدَمُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتٍ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ Adam alayhi salam learnt some words directly from his Lord and he used those words and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave him. Verily, Allah is the forgiver, the most merciful. Some of our scholars indicate to us that they were the words in the Qur'an. They said, O oh, our Lord, ظلمنا أنفسنا. We have oppressed ourselves, and if you do not forgive us and give us mercy, we will be among the losers. And this is similar du'as that you will find among the prophets and the people of righteousness when they say to the, about themselves, I have wronged myself, my Lord. Forgive me. That was the dua of Yunus alayhi salam in the stomach of the hoot of the whale or of the big fish. We mentioned this last week. Now, Iblis and his soldiers, the shayateen, they understand what the human being is like. They know how the human being can be tricked. They know things about the human self which the children of Adam alayhi salam did not know. If it wasn't for Allah to warn us from them, we would have not known. So what happened? We said that Adam السلام, knew the knowledge of everything. He knew the names of all things. He knew the animals, the fish, the, how to prepare his life, everything. So he didn't need anyone to teach him like parents. He knew it on earth and his wife was there learning from Adam alayhi salam. <clears throat> 